This is the Fujifilm X-T1, a camera released in, back in 2014. It's a decade old. And in this episode, I'm going to share with you six reasons why I chose this camera in 2024. The reason why I chose this camera is as a replacement of my X-T2. Unfortunately, it died down. There is some issue with the sensor there. There's spickles on it, pixels, whatever it is. We can't recover it. So I thought to myself, you know what? Let's just upgrade from the X-T2, the X-T2, the X-T2 to the X-T4. This little beast of a machine. And I didn't like it for photography. Great for videography. Um, so I bought the X-T30 Mark II which is an awesome little camera. There's enough videos here on this particular camera to see what I thought of it. But with this said, one of the limitations on the X-T10-30 Mark II series is that once you shoot with a little bit of a heavier lens or a lens which is slightly bigger, the form factor is kind of getting into the way here. So that's my second reason, it's the form factor. If I look at both cameras here, you'll see here, this is the X-T4 big bulky yeah the xt3 is an option as well but it's a lot more expensive if i look at both of these cameras my preference will go to the xt1 for the very simple reason shutter button sorry iso shutter release button those three i really missed that one on the xt30 mark ii you'll also have this little thing here photometry meters so and on the later models from the X-T4 onwards, you got a film and a photography centric dial. I mean, overall, I like the build quality of this. Yeah, it just feels good in the hand. It's produced in, in Japan, which a lot of people see like, oh, produced in Japan, it's perfect. I wouldn't say it's perfect, but the one thing that it has from Japan is that the materials and the finishes are pretty decent to what you see nowadays on the XS20, for instance, or the uh, X100V now, which is a lot more plasticky. So the build quality doesn't mean that all of a sudden it's superior that it comes from Japan and crap because it comes from China. No, it's just the materials used are very, very different. Reason number three here, and that's probably a reason you're gonna surprise is I really kind of downgraded, if you wanna call it that way, to the X-T1 because of the sensor. I love the sensor on the X-T2, that was an x 3 sensor. With this camera, the X-T1, I have a bit of history as I borrowed it once on a trip from a friend of mine. I completely forgot about it. And then I went into um, Lightroom here, suddenly saw Fujifilm X-T1, couldn't quite remember what was going on. Looked at the pictures and I was like, wow, this is not only sharp, there's a really specific tonality, feeling, charm to these pictures. What is going on there? And that's the X-Trans 2 sensor. It's a little bit more yellowish. The blues are slightly different. From a color science perspective, it's not perfect, but that's what I like, imperfection. So I really think that X-Trans 2 sensor is a big selling point. Which brings me to the fourth part. I just mentioned the image quality coming out of the X-T1, although 10 years old, don't be mistaken about this. The images are very sharp at times, sharper than they are on the X-T30 Mark II at times. Yeah, Let me know in the comments below if you have a similar thing that pictures on the X-T1 in general come out somewhat clearer, sharper. So the image quality is a big thing. Yeah? You also have the basic film sims, the originals. Yeah, the only one I really miss is Eterna, to be very honest. That's the only one I really miss. But I'm, I'm normally very happy with classic chrome and a little bit of black and white. Yeah, I'm perfectly fine with it. You can also apply the film sims in the menus. The only problem here is, this is one of the limitations, is that you can't name them. So you really have to remember which ones you've actually used. Yeah, I also think in terms of image quality, this camera will cater for any kind of genre except fast moving subjects. So sports and wildlife, I don't think this is the best camera for it, but that's got more to do with the autofocus than it has with the image quality itself. So the sensor is not to blame here, it's more the autofocus system. Which brings me to my fifth reason. It has its limitations. And that is something that you probably wonder, why is that so important? Well, the reason for me is limitations is what makes photography great. Yeah, the autofocus is choppy in single, but if you go into continuous, it's very choppy. So you can either shoot manual or single. It's a bit of a limitation if you're used to newer cameras, more modern cameras. I personally love it. It brings about that, that, that photography thing. And then there's the ISO low light. And let me know what you think about this. I've often seen, oh, the ISO performance on the X-T1 is only good 
up until 1600. Well, I've shot them between 3200 and 6400, and I think in general the images look very sharp, very tactile. Yeah, you have a bit of noise at times, but nothing you can't fix in post. So I personally think that the ISO handling for the camera for the time it was released is phenomenal. I also think the general camera experience, the general photography experience you have here is fantastic. Now, if you're a hybrid shooter, I cannot recommend this camera because it only films in HD. There is an audio jack which requires an adapter. I would normally say then go to an X-T3 if you really want a good hybrid camera. In that way, I would normally advise use your smartphone. Now, and last and not least, you've heard now that I love it as a replacement camera, I think the features on it are pretty awesome. I think the image quality is surprisingly good. I think that the limitations here actually add to your photography experience. And last but not least, the price and availability. This camera cost me, with a grip and three batteries, 310 euros. For a used Fujifilm camera, people, this is the hidden gem, what you're looking for if you want to go into Fujifilm photography. And make no mistake, this was a pro user camera back in the day. This really was a pro user camera. So from my point of view, I would always, always recommend this camera. And it shares the same sensor as the following cameras. And if you want an XE1, which some of you probably want with the CCD sensor, you'll be paying 600 bucks. The XT2 used 450 to 700 bucks. The XT3, 900 bucks. The XT30 Mark II, 700 to 800 used, and you're lucky.